in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live, and we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. And if you'd like to engage live in the content, you got to go follow me over on Instagram Live. I'm at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content, just like Michelle and Kimberly, Keto Diet Girl, Elvira, J Gand, Maria, and so many others that are coming in right now. Thank you guys for being here today on Jimmy Rants. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it does disappear. You'll need to pop on over to YouTube. That's where we put all of the past episodes. Type in the keyword search Jimmy Ranch. You will find the show. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show. It's in podcast form over on the Jimmy Ranch podcast. Look it up on Apple Podcast or Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants will not be anything really new to those of you that regularly watch my show because you know that I have been warning you that there is a very concerted effort on the part of people that simply do not like the fact that you bad keto people out there or paleo people or anybody, a carnivore people, all of you are doing something very bad in your diet. And the sin that they think you have done in your diet is that you dare eat meat. And so a lot of these plant-based vegan vegetarian advocates have very powerful positions on medical journal boards And these are the very people that are the gatekeepers of what you, as a consumer, get to see when it comes to research. And so there's two brand new studies I want to share with you here today that remind us uh, that they're out there and that they're doing these things to try to discourage people from eating meat. Now, let's be very clear. Meat is perhaps the most nutrient-dense food you could possibly put in your mouth. We have talked about that ad nauseum here on this show. Definitely go look up uh, the carnivore people and the work that they're doing. Uh, I'm one of those people, by the way. Um, And just look at what is actually in meat. And you'll quickly discover, oh my gosh, how could we have ever vilified This food that is probably the perfect food when you look at the amino acid profile, when you look at the fats that are included in it, the healthy fats, the fact that it's minimized in in carbohydrate, the fact that uh, it's actually a real whole food. That's something that's often missed in the discussion of red meat. We want to vilify red meat, but it's beef. That's That's all red meat is, beef. But then you look at a Beyond Burger, which I tried uh, about a month ago. It's got 27 or so ingredients in it. And yet we want to glorify a, a product that has 27 or so mostly highly refined ingredients in it just to give us a burger-like thing rather than promoting the thing that has one ingredient and tastes delicious and is very nutritious for your body. But that's an aside. Let's get into the two studies. And what we're going to talk about here today is the plant-based movement, you guys, is in desperation. I want you to know that. As much as it seems like the anti-meat message is getting out there and people are believing it, I think all of these studies that have been coming out and the two that I'm going to feature here today on Jimmy Rants, this is proof positive. They are in total desperation mode 
trying to hedge their bets against people eating this very thing that even they now realize is not as bad as it's been made out to be. So this first one I've had for a few days, I'm still battling a cold a little bit after the low carb cruise, I got a cold. So I'm still battling that a little bit, but uh, I had this one in the queue to be able to talk about and, oh, what do you need? Oh, Christine is going to make faces at me while I'm doing my hey, Jimmy rants. Well, you got to come on camera now, weirdo. You're going to make faces at them. <laughs> oh, you feel better about yourself? Yeah. Excellent. Just wanted to come out and harass you. I was getting into the literal meat of the stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any of you guys out there have wives that harass you? That's Christine. <laughs> but I love her. Okay. So let's get into that first study. I had this one a few days ago and I saw it and I went, okay, yeah, here we go again. Before I get into this though, you know, when I first started blogging and first started kind of doing this work 15 years ago, we would get this kind of a study, these kind of a studies that I'm going to talk about here today, maybe once every six months or so. But since keto has caught on, we're literally seeing it every single month and two within the span of a week of each other. It, it's pretty fascinating. That's why I believe uh, that they are in desperation mode. That's all this means to me. All right, so let's get to the first one. Headline, white meat can raise cholesterol as much as red meat, new study shows. So for the longest time, they've been telling people, you want to cut your LDL cholesterol, you want to cut your total cholesterol, which, by the way, don't worry about either one of those things. But to do that, you need to cut out red meat, replace it with lean meats like chicken, turkey, blah, blah, blah. Right? They've been telling us that forever and ever and ever. So what have people done? They have dutifully cut out red meat. They've dutifully eating chicken breast like it's going to be the be-all, end-all. And they think by doing that, <clears throat> they're going to be able to prevent their cholesterol going up and by extension of cholesterol going up, prevent heart disease, okay? Now they're saying white meat will raise your cholesterol as much as red meat. I think they set this up all along. I think they, they knew this was the talking point they wanted to do, but let's get people off red meat first. Let's convince them that white meat is healthy. And then once they start embracing white meat, then let's say, eh, 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 actually the white meat's just as bad. Go all plant-based. You see, you see how they're, it's an incremental way to get society to change. And I think real people are going to rebel against this, but let's get into the details of this study. White meat, such as chicken, may raise blood cholesterol levels as much as red meat does, according to a new small study. The findings surprised the researchers who didn't expect that eating large amounts of poultry would lead to higher blood cholesterol levels. Of the three diets in the study, red meat, white meat, and non-meat proteins, only the plant-based diet was associated with healthy blood cholesterol levels. All right, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've got, you gotta have some translation of terms here. Healthy blood cholesterol levels, there is no such thing. Not in the traditional sense that they're talking about. Healthy blood cholesterol levels in their world means an LDL under 100 and a total cholesterol under 200. Healthy cholesterol levels in my world and should be in your world is triglycerides under 100 and HDL over 50. Is eating chicken breast going to give you those numbers? No, not without the context of carbohydrate restriction. And as you're quickly going to find out, they never shared what else they ate with the red meat, what else they ate with the white meat, and what else they ate with the non-meat proteins. They didn't share that information at all. And you can probably guarantee that they ate copious amounts of carbohydrates in the diet. And yet they blamed the meat. And there was no mention of the carbohydrates at all. Dr. Ronald Krauss, a senior scientist and director of atherosclerosis research at the Children's Hospital Oakland Research Institute said, 
When we planned this study, we expected red meat to have a more adverse effect on blood cholesterol than white meat, but we were surprised that was simply not the case. Their effects on cholesterol are identical when the saturated fats are equivalent. <sighs> And they pretend like that saturated fat is still the enemy. And I, for one, just don't understand that anymore. With all that we know about how essential saturated fats are in the diet, it's not the only fat you should consume. But we now know, we have good evidence now, that having a healthy mix of saturated fats like butter, coconut oil, lard, the naturally occurring ones that come in meat, along with uh, monounsaturated fats like avocados, avocado oil, olive oil, and oh yeah, by the way, that red meat that they like to vilify, 55% of it is monounsaturated fat. And then small amounts of polyunsaturated fats that are naturally occurring in things like nuts and seeds. That is a healthy mix. Yet they want to say, oh, red meat, red meat, red meat. And now they're coming after even white meat, which we know white meat is devoid of fat. So if it's raising cholesterol, could it be two things? Could it be that cholesterol doesn't really matter as much as they think it does? And could it be something else in the diet that is raising the cholesterol? And I would argue it's the carbohydrates, the little boogeyman that they don't want to talk about in this study. They just want to put the focus in on just those things. Now, if Dr. Krauss would be ethical and would isolate only eating red meat, only eating white meat, and then only eating non-meat proteins as their sole source of nutrition, I'd have had a lot more respect for this study and the results that they found. I don't think cholesterol still would have mattered as a marker, but to me, removing the X factor, which is the carbohydrates, would have made this a more ethical study and maybe something of value. The problem is a lot of those plant-based proteins also, uh, protein sources also have a lot of carbohydrates as well. The study called Approach Animal and Plant Protein and Cardiovascular Health. It was a trial that looked at 113 healthy people. They were randomly assigned to a diet that was either high or low in saturated fat. All the participants refrained from taking any vitamins or drinking alcohol during the length of the study. <coughs> Participants in both groups cycled through three different diets. So they put everybody on the same diet three different times. The first diet was a red meat, primarily beef diet. But again, it says primarily beef, not only beef. So what did they eat with the beef? Beef and white rice, beef and potatoes, beef and a slice of bread? We don't know. Doesn't say here. A white meat diet, mainly chicken and turkey, and again, did they have chicken and dressing, turkey and dressing? We don't know. And a non-meat protein, which included legumes, nuts, grains, and soy. Each diet period lasted four weeks in all. Between each diet period, the uh, individuals had a washout period during which they ate their regular foods. So you go back to eating your regular diet after having this, uh period of time that you're on this specific diet. What's a regular diet? That's always tripped me out. You mean how you ate before? I suppose you could say, well, they came in as healthy individuals. So how they were eating before must have been pretty good. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, ba -ba -ba. In addition, the participants had blood tests at the start and the finish of each new diet. So they were on these diets for four weeks for each of them, and they read blood, ran blood work. The results showed that while participants in the high saturated fat group had more total and LDL cholesterol than the people in the low saturated fat group, both the red and the white meat raised LDL levels regardless of the saturated fat content in the diet. Guys, why is this not front page news? Why... Have we not heard about this study in the context of, um, oops, we've been telling you saturated fat's going to raise your cholesterol. 
we've been telling you saturated fat is the sole reason why your LDL levels go through the roof. We've been telling you that for years. And yet, here is a chicken and turkey diet. Is there saturated fat in chicken and turkey? Nope. So why did their cholesterol levels go up? Why is this not front page news? Why is this not leading the health news on your local television station or on the national television station? Why is this not leading that, um, okay, something else must be going on if it's not the saturated fat raising cholesterol? What else could it be? And again, I will argue, it's the unknown carbohydrates that they're consuming in these diets. And if you're just joining us, yes, the plant-based movement seems to be everywhere. Oh, we need to get rid of red meat. We need Now we need to get rid of white meat, according to this study, because it's doing bad things to your health. Guys, the fact that they're having to come out with cockamamie studies like this to prove that you need to be eating plant-based, it is desperation mode to the hilt. And I hope you see it that way. I hope you realize this ain't real. I know it's popular to say things like, it's fake news. This is definitely fake news. And it's meant to discourage you as a keto dieter, discourage you if you include meat in your diet. And it's anything but valid research. Yes, it was a small study where they did uh, try to do it in a random way. They did try to do it looking at healthy people and having actual people and not data. The next study I'm going to show you, they only looked at data. And you know what I think about those kind of studies. But this kind of research doesn't help anybody because they're identifying that it's the meat that caused all these changes. And it's not the carbohydrates, which we don't know what they ate. Can you see all the big old question marks right in the middle of this? It's bad, really bad. In other words, white and red meat have the same effects on blood cholesterol levels. According to the researchers, saturated fats occur naturally in fatty beef, poultry with the skin, butter, cream, and cheeses. Too much LDL cholesterol from saturated fats can build up in a person's blood vessels, causing plaque and increasing the risk of heart attack. No, they can no longer say that. Whether they wanted to or not, this study, you guys, proves that having higher LDL cholesterol and by extension of that higher total cholesterol has not a darn thing to do with the saturated fats. They didn't find it in the chicken and the turkey diet. There was no saturated fat in there. And yet those people's cholesterol levels went up too. How do they explain this? Because the, nar the narrative has always been, oh, well, you got to avoid saturated fat because that raises your LDL and your total cholesterol, which we know increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. But this other group had no saturated fat at all and their cholesterol went up. It's crazy. The team also looked at LDL particles of different sizes. So those of you that have followed me for a while, you know I've talked about this test. Uh, I'm not sure if they did the NMR lipo profile or some other particle size. There's various ones. There's one called the VAP test. Uh, there's different particle size tests. I don't know which one they ran, but they looked at uh, the LDL particles. And in general, medium and smaller size are denser and heavier. Those are the small, dense LDL pattern B that you don't want and some doctors think they're more detrimental, uh, slightly larger or less dense or fluffier LDL are thought to be less harmful. Um, recent research posted on uh, the International Atherosclerosis Society website suggests both small and large may increase the risk of buildup. Okay, yeah, these lipidologist guys, they think it's all about the total number of LDL particles. It's all about the small. You wanna get the small down as much as possible and the best way to do that is to carbohydrate restrict. That's it. So eat a low-carb diet, eat a ketogenic diet, and you will lower your small, dense LDL particles. But this is something that they're even looking in this study, trying to find some excuse as to why this could be helpful or not helpful. 
And again, if you're just joining us, this new study, white meat raises cholesterol just as much as red meat. And what we're seeing here is validation of something we've talked about quite a bit in the keto world. It's not the saturated fat that's the enemy. They've always vilified saturated fat as being the grand enemy in your health. Why? Because they say it's the reason your cholesterol goes up. It's the reason why your arteries get clogged. It's the reason why you get heart disease. And yet the study participants that ate chicken and turkey primarily as their protein source ate no saturated fat at all, still had an increase in their cholesterol. And that should lead the researchers, and it didn't, but it should have led curious researchers to ask, how in the world did that happen if our hypothesis is that saturated fat raises the cholesterol? Because very obviously something else did this time. The study revealed there were no significant differences in the amount of LDL particles of different sizes in people while they were on the white and red meat. Eating lots of saturated fat was associated with higher concentration of large LDL. Why, thank you. Thank you. It's something we talk about a lot. When you eat a ketogenic diet, you shift your LDL from the very bad, small, dense LDL particles, aka pattern B, you shift it over to mostly the large, fluffy, and benign pattern A. That's what we want. That is the preventative of having a heart attack and having heart disease set in. And the way you can test this, you guys, is to get that NMR lipo profile test run. But you can also get a CT scan of your chest to look for actual uh, cardiovascular disease developing. You can get a, a CIMT, which looks at the carotid intima media thickness. And it shows that there's actual disease taking place. They're admitting in this study where they're saying, well, white meat raises cholesterol as much as red meat. They're admitting that when you eat red meat, you're actually doing good things in your body. They're admitting it, but they're not admitting it. In all, they found these large fluffy LDL particles increased more in the red and white meat diets compared with the plant-based. So that should raise some eyebrows. So when you eat a plant-based protein, which they described earlier as nuts and beans and uh, whole grains and all this, legumes, that should tell them something. If this really small, dense LDL particles become more concentrated, those guys, those LDL particles, they're the widow maker. Those small, dense ones are the ones that easily penetrate your arterial wall and lead to heart disease. And yet that was totally missed in this study. This is why you don't need to get upset by headlines. You got to dig deeper like what I'm doing here today on Jimmy Rants. You got to realize they're not going to give you the whole story. Why does it take a layperson like me to translate science from the media headlines that are all salacious, oh, let's vilify meat again, when the reality is they're showing that good things were happening with the people eating the meat and very bad things were happening for the people eating the plant-based protein. Why is it the job of Jimmy freaking Moore to have to point this out? Where is the integrity in the media reporting on health and on studies? I don't know. The team acknowledged that their findings went against the cover current government dietary guidelines. And again, don't think this doesn't matter either. That 2020, they're updating the guidelines. All of these studies that we're reading and sharing about here, this is all designed, you guys, to influence how they're going to recommend you and I eat for the next five years. When they release those 2020 dietary guidelines, those are going to become basically the law of the land when it comes to how you should be feeding yourselves. And I've talked about before, it's not about, we'll just ignore them. It gets into the culture through the public schools, through our military, through the welfare programs. All of it is influenced heavily by what is in those guidelines. So don't, don't think this isn't purposeful. The timing of this one year before the dietary guidelines comes out is not surprising to me at all. 
Until now, there hasn't been a comprehensive comparison of the health effects of red meat, white meat, and non-meat proteins. It's also possible <clears throat> that there are other factors about red meat that can be uh, affecting your cardiovascular health. What? what? What other factors about red meat would affect your cardiovascular health? Are they now saying, oops, we know the fat isn't the issue anymore, so let's try to find something else in there. And I just did a Jimmy Rants recently about how they have moved on to the iron content now in red meat. And, oh, well, higher iron, we know, blah, 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 blah. And so they're going to always be looking for some connection to make a negative effect from red meat happen. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it's very difficult in my mind that a rational thinking person, and especially a researcher, can't be this stupid. Let's just put it that way. Is there money coming in that's helping to fund studies? Are, are they being influenced by some groups out there that are you know, promising to fund their lab if they'll do these kinds of studies? I don't know. We know from past experience that a lot of research that would have shown the opposite of what was happening got squelched uh, in the late 1950s, I believe it was. Um, there were some Harvard researchers that had some really damning information about sugar, and they were paid off like $50,000 uh, of equivalent to today's money, $50,000 to not publish that research. And then what came right behind that was the vilification of fat. And then behind that became the dietary guidelines. And you know where we are today with all that. So I wonder how much of that is still going on. You have to think about it, whether you're a conspiracy theorist or not. You have to acknowledge that because that has happened before, you can't think it can't happen again. Indeed, other effects of red meat consumption could contribute to heart disease, and these effects should be explored in more detail in order to improve health. Uh, Dr. Krauss, you don't mention any other, quote, factors. Is he referring to the iron content? Is he referring to something else? We don't know because he didn't put it in his study. This study is well executed and rigorous. It clearly shows that eating plant-based proteins is associated with lower levels of cholesterol. So... What does lower level of cholesterol arbitrarily mean to the health and the potential risk for cardiovascular disease of the person that has that lower level of cholesterol? All the studies that I know about show that having higher cholesterol levels is the goal. You want higher cholesterol because cholesterol is at the basis of all these functions in your body that if you had lower levels of cholesterol, your body simply could not function. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather have high cholesterol than low cholesterol every single day of the week. There is no danger that is inherent with having higher cholesterol levels. And I don't know what it's going to take to get people to wrap their heads around that. I wrote a whole book about that called Cholesterol Clarity six years ago. That book came out and I tried to make it as explainable as possible, understandable as possible. If you're watching this right now and you still worry about your cholesterol, please go to cholesterolclarity.com and get that book. I did an audio book. If you want to hear my voice that doesn't have a bunch of snot in the, in the nose talking to you. Um, I read the audio book. There's a Kindle book and there's a, a hardback book. Get the book because we, we explained why a lot of what you believe about cholesterol just simply isn't true. And yet it still pervades in these kinds of studies. They want to say it's all about lowering the cholesterol and it really isn't. To me, it's about lowering triglycerides. It's about lowering blood sugar and insulin levels. It's about lowering inflammation levels. Those are the things that matter. And if you put the things, put the focus on the things that matter, then people actually get healthy. The reason we still have heart attacks, the reason still people still die of heart disease and all of these what they call cardiometabolic diseases is because what we've been telling people to do is dead wrong. And the definition of insanity is doing that same thing again and again and again, expecting a different result. And we've been living in nutritional insanity for decades Let's break the cycle, you guys. 
The take-home message of this study is eat more plants, eat more plant-based proteins, limit saturated fat from all sources, and limit your intake of animal proteins from all sources. These are great messages in my book. Great messages for who? That's not what this study showed at all. I hope you see that by now. But you see how they try to shape the message? It doesn't matter what the data showed them. The data showed them very clearly that red meat improved the LDL cholesterol particle size. That's a very good thing. The data showed really good results. And they showed really bad results for the plant-based protein, plant-based diet. So to have a conclusion that limit your saturated fat, limit animal protein, limit and have more plant-based protein, that's not a good conclusion. Not at all. The new research had several limitations. Ooh, what could this be? The meats in the study did not include grass-fed or processed products, mm, like bacon or sausage. It did uh, not also include fish. Okay, so they didn't have grass-fed beef. They didn't have bacon or sausage or fish. And it was very small study and relatively short-lived, only four weeks long. This, by the way, was published in the June 4th edition of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And again, we have no idea what the carb content of those diets were. All right. You guys ready for the second one? Because as bad as that one was, this is the one it just released today. And I saw it early today when I got up. And I said, okay, let me rewind my Jimmy Rants from like three months ago when there was a big red meat study that came out. And here's another one, guys. Eating red meat three times a week. How many of you eat red meat three times a day? Just kidding. I had it one time yesterday, one glorious time yesterday. Uh, increases your risk of early death by 10%. Research suggests switching to healthier animal or plant-based alternatives can help. <coughs> All right, so this is out of the university, uh, or excuse me, the Harvard University uh, School of Public Health, looked at a link between uh, red meat consumption over an eight-year period, um, and then the rates of mortality, people dying, during the subsequent eight years. So here's the clue, guys, that it's really bad science. The researchers looked at 53,553 female nurses. So this is the, the Inhane study the big nurses health study that is always used to do research of an epidemiological kind. But that's all this is. And they said eating red meat three times a week will increase your risk of early death by 10%. High intake of red meat like beef, pork, and lamb has been linked to a number of health problems, blah, 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 blah. Little is known about how changes in the amount of red meat consumed will influence your risk of death. Guess what? The, the risk of death for human beings is 100%. We're all going to die. It always kills me how they look at these mortality studies. Oh, well, your risk of dying. We're all going to die. I think what you mean, the risk of dying early, is that what they're trying to say? But I digress. All of the participants were free of cardiovascular disease and cancer at the start of the study. How do they know that? Maybe they weren't diagnosed with cardiovascular disease or diagnosed with cancer, but we know you guys, and they could throw type 2 diabetes in there as well. We know you guys, those things don't just pop up overnight. Those things happen progressively more and more and more until, bam, the disease sets in. So that it didn't just pop up. And we now have very sophisticated uh, tests that we can run where we can see, see disease progression before it progresses to the point of no return. Alzheimer's is another one. It doesn't just pop up. It progresses in decades. Every four years, the participants were asked to complete a questionnaire where they were asked how often they ate each food in the past month. The questionnaire again. I have gone over this, so I'm not going to belabor a lot of these points because I have done this on Jimmy Rants before. But questionnaire surveys of what you ate over the past year. 
I mean, I could sort of kind of guess what I had over the past year, but there's no way, and you you know what, that I could ever verifiably say, oh yeah, this is what I had of this. You'd have to keep a journal. You'd have to do all of that. And how many people do that? During the study, the total number of deaths from any cause reached 14,019. The leading causes were cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory, and neurodegenerative disease. The researchers determined that eating both processed and unprocessed red meat three and a half times a week or more over an eight-year period was associated with 10% higher risk. Okay, we've talked about this before as well, but associations do not mean causation correlation with data doesn't mean it. And again, we don't know what they ate with the red meat. We don't. How much carbs was in there? How many Twinkies and Ding Dongs was in there? How much Coca-Cola did they drink? We don't know. So for there to be this big splashy headline, eating red meat three times a week increases risk of early death by 10%. We don't know. Was it the Coca-Cola? We don't know. Was it the fast food that they ate? We don't know. This is what I hate about nutritional studies. They make a conclusion based on their bias of what they want to believe. And they don't actually look at what the data shows. And of course, in this case, the data shows as a means of forming a a hypothesis to test. They haven't actually looked at patients. They haven't actually looked at what these people do in a lab. All they've looked at is data points and making conclusions based on data points. That's not good science. Uh, increasing processed red meat, such as bacon and sausages, by three to three and a half servings a week was more associated with a 13% higher risk of death, while increasing the uh, intake of unprocessed red meat was associated with a 9% higher risk. So, Here's something about these percentages, by the way. So they throw out in the headline, uh, increases your risk of early death by 10%. So there is this thing called relative risk. In other words, the risk as associated with another number of, of one number to another number, the actual risk change, that 10%, you guys, is actually 0.1%. Did you know that? The, and that's called the absolute risk. So there's relative risk, one number to another number, like those old Lipitor commercials used to say, oh, Lipitor will drop your LDL cholesterol by 40%. Sounds like a big number, right? Well, it's 40% compared to another number. It wasn't the absolute risk. The absolute risk of that 40%, guys, 2%. But they can't make a splash on a commercial by showing you 2% change. Who would buy that drug? But 40% change? You bet. And that's how they bamboozle people to the tune of $29 billion a year. Fooling people into thinking that they were doing something good in their health. Same with this. You cut your red meat down. That three times a week, you cut that down. You will increase your risk of early or decrease that risk of early death. Um, but it's minuscule. It might as well be zero. But they're not telling you that. All right. The team also found swapping red meat for healthier animal or plant-based alternatives was associated with lower risk of death. Swapping out one serving of red meat for a serving of fish was linked to 17% lower risk. This was only an observational study. Yeah, no kidding. Guys, I don't think we as lay people, which is most of you in this audience, I know I have several medical doctors that watch this as well. Thank you guys all for being here. But this is something, we have got to stand up against it. We cannot allow this kind of research to get out there and people think it means something just because it's in the media. Can I tell you the media doesn't care a bleep about your health. The media wants a salacious headline to get eyeballs and earballs. That's all they want. They get your attention. They have eyeballs and earballs for their sponsors, and they're happy. They don't give a rip about actually making you healthy. 
Which is why here on Jimmy Rants, I do give a rip about you. And I do try to give you good information that helps you make an educated choice. Because quite frankly, you're not going to see this anywhere else. The dream, you guys, is to be able to be that alternative voice on uh, national radio. I would love to do this kind of stuff in a national format that would give an alternative. And I would have plenty of, quote, sponsors that I would not be beholden to, that I have to suck up to, because that's what all these companies that have TV and radio, they have to suck up to the sponsors that help pay for their programming. And that includes a lot of pharmaceutical companies. That includes a lot of food companies. And I would not be beholden to any of those people. No. No. We need integrity in health journalism. But again, I digress. (coughs) Uh, 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 The observational study, uh, that's a limitation they admitted, including that they did not look at the reasons for changes in red meat, which could have influenced the results. They also add the data gathered uh, covered a large number of people over a longer follow-up period with repeated assessment. Um, They didn't actually follow those people. They looked at the data points of those people. The researchers say that the findings provide, quote, a practical message to the general public of just how dynamic changes in red uh, meat consumption is associated with health. No, no, it did not. It showed that your perception that red meat is bad and your bias as a researcher that red meat is somehow going to cause harm, that's what it showed. The research itself didn't show any such thing. It didn't. So let's stop pretending and let's stop lying to the general public about what this showed. I'm sick of it. A change in protein source or eating healthy plant-based foods such as a vegetable or whole grains will improve your longevity. Uh -uh. You know what improves longevity is lowering inflammation and insulin. What lowers inflammation and insulin very well? Carbohydrate restriction. Eating meat. Those things are very well known to do those things. Let's stop pretending like the plant-based diet is the magic pill. Let's stop pretending like that if everybody just went plant-based, there would be no disease. And yet that's the imagery they want you to believe. It's just not true. The study uh, follows a call from... The study follows a call from the University of Oxford researchers to implement a red meat tax on sausage and bacon. Yeah, I'll be danged. That ain't happening. Anyway, I'm done with that. That's all that was in that study. So guys, the message is clear. These plant-based people are desperate. They so desperately want to be heard. And to me, they've been out there for so long. Yep, 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 yep. They're like the little chihuahua that's out there at your nipping at your at your heels. They're annoying as all get out. But they have no bite. They have no validity. They have nothing that shows they have any veracity. And we, as people who do eat meat and do it proudly for our health, we need to just be aware that this kind of stuff is out there and they're not going anywhere because they're so desperate. They're going to come up with cockamamie studies that we'll feature here on Jimmy Rants. They simply aren't true. They're not scientific. They're not based on anything that's real science. Show me the randomized controlled clinical trial that compares eating a 27 to 45 ingredient plant-based burger is far better than eating a burger that's made with one ingredient, beef. Show me that study and let them only eat that. That's all they're allowed to eat. Just beef or just a Beyond Burger. And I want to see health outcomes in a randomized controlled clinical way. I would sign up to do the beef one, by the way. If you need a study participant, I'm there. All right, guys. Let's see what what you guys have to say. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you for being here today on Jimmy Rants. 
Health Truths me uh, says pushback equals you're onto something. Otherwise, they ignore you. Just keep on keeping on. Absolutely. Kitty Caddick says cholesterol is still a substance of concern. Sadly, yes, Kitty Caddick. I'd say of all the things in my work that I still get questions about, that's the one. That's the one people just can't wrap their heads around. Why? <clears throat> cholesterol is not meaningful. And I think it's one of those things, Kat, that we've just heard it so much so often over the years. We can't, in our minds, justify not caring about it. That's all we've ever cared about. What's your cholesterol level? It's almost like the first thing beyond your weight. How much you weigh? Uh, and then what's the very next question? What's your total cholesterol? I mean, think about it. Total cholesterol, total cholesterol, um, is asked about far more than blood sugar. Oh, blood sugar, that's, that, that's a diabetes thing. Is it? Insulin. Oh, that's really a diabetes thing. Is it? People know more about their total cholesterol than they ever know about A1C, blood sugar, insulin, HSCRP, any of these markers that are truly valid and are important in your health. You don't know anything about those but they sure do know their total cholesterol. And they know that if it's over 200, they're at great risk for cardiovascular disease. So yes, the message is still real in people's minds. Even people in the keto community that have done this a while, there's always those reservations in the back of their mind. Oh, I wonder if this is really... It's one reason I wrote Cholesterol Clarity and it's one reason that book still uh, sells well is people are still worried. Even people after they read the book, they go, are you, sh are you sure? Are, are you sure? I'm just, I'm, sh I'm sure. Reread it again. CM Keto Flex fake food is like a cheap meal. It just doesn't make sense if you want to eat meat. Just eat meat. If you want cake, eat cake. Good Lord. Exactly. <clears throat> but I think they feel like if they have a plant-based meat product that it fits their regimen of who they are and their worldview being plant-based, and yet they still get to enjoy the mouthfeel, texture, and pleasure of having meat. But I say if you have that innate pleasure for something to that level, is it not your body trying to tell you that there's something in the real part of that thing that you're still missing? I wonder about the people that eat those plant-based proteins, by the way. Um, I wonder... How many of them even realize that when they're craving meat, it's their body probably deficient in protein. It's their body deficient in some of the other micronutrients that are in real meat. I don't know. I don't even know if they're even that self-aware that that's why they're wanting those things. I don't think so. Uh... Kitty Caddick says white or that white meat affects triglyceride part of lipoprofile because of its insulogenic effect. Yeah, it could. Could, could. Alberto says eat a regular diet equals don't ask me. I don't know anything about nutrition. <laughs> Alberto, you are back. Carlos, thanks for being here, buddy. Berkeley says what is tragic in all of this is that many health professionals continue to prescribe lethal diets of high carb with low to no fat, people get sicker and die. Yeah. And they're not held accountable. That's the other thing, Berkeley. Doctors can give out advice on something they have not been trained in. And yet that advice is killing people faster. And yet there's no uh, ramifications of that at all. It's disgusting. Sam says, I don't care what they eat. Why are they so interested in what I eat? Same with your uterus. I don't care about their owners. Leave me alone with mine. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <clears throat> and I personally don't care how someone else chooses to eat themselves. I want to help them if they're interested in making better choices. But I don't want to tell you what you're supposed to eat any more than you should tell me what I, sh I should eat. But these kind of studies that I read about here today, they don't help anybody. Neither one of these studies gave you any information about anything you could do to change to make yourself healthier. Not an iota. And yet the whole innuendo of both of them was, oh, well, red meat and meat in general, you need to shift over uh, to more of a plant-based if you want to be healthier. They didn't show either one of those. And yet that's the kind of message that continues to get out there. 
Kitty Caddick says, sometimes I feel we just need to let them eat all that sickening food, clean the planet, uh, let smartest stay and keep on going. Yes, I'm rude sometimes. <laughs> no, I love it. I'm right there with you, Cat. It's like if they, if they want to act fools, then let's let them act fools. And yeah, if they think that's healthy and they think they're going to live long eating that way, go ahead and let them think that because that will catch up to them. Tammy says, yes, red and uh, white will elevate your cholesterol when you eat garbage with it. Exactly, Tammy. <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. R.W. Hempel says, it angers me that my doctor told me that I needed to rethink my keto diet. All my numbers were perfect. She still doesn't have a clue. Very frustrating. She doesn't know any better. Well, doctors, again, were not given all the information about this. And in chapter 10 of Cholesterol Clarity, I have a whole chapter on why doctors are so clueless about cholesterol. And the fact is, they just weren't given good training in this. And I think it's time, just like we need to start teaching nutrition in medical school, it's time we start talking about triglyceride HDL ratio. It's time we start talking about the importance of the particle size in health because you t you do an NMR lipo profile and you get the particle number and the particle size most doctors don't know what to do with that they're still clueless about that and this is stuff they need to be on top of because it matters it matters a lot so yeah there's a whole lot of reforming we could do maybe one of these days I'll do a Jimmy rants where I talk about all of the reforms to the medical school system that if we just simply taught doctors this 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 and this they would be far better to help their patients. Let me think on that one a little bit, guys. I think I may give her a copy of Cholesterol Clarity. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, R.W. Hempel. Calamity Tam says, my aunt's doctor is refusing to run any more blood work until she agrees to take a statin. She can't do that. She can't make your aunt take a statin drug. Your aunt is the final one that makes that decision. Now, your aunt can take the the, the prescription from the doctor and then just never feel, fill it. That's your aunt's prerogative if she so chooses to do that. But the doctor cannot dangle over her head, I refuse to run any more tests until you take a statin. That can't happen. That's not legal. It's not. Your aunt is the boss in that relationship. We live in a small town and doctors are limited. Her doctor believes the same about beef. Well. I don't care if you live in a small town or not. If you have to drive 100 miles to get to a good doctor, you go to a good doctor. If it means you go on Skype with someone and you talk to a functional medicine doctor like Dr. Will Cole or, or other ones that are out there doing uh, virtual visits, you do that. Don't stay with a doctor. You're like the wife who stays with, a, with an abusive husband. Well, he's the only one I got. If he's beating the bleep out of you, you got to get out of that. That's medical abuse, what your aunt is going through. Refuse to accept that and move on. Christine and I are now seeing a doctor because my local doctor uh, wouldn't run certain tests on me. I fired him. He would not run fasting insulin. Dude, I need to know what my fasting insulin is. He refused. So now we go to, uh, we live in Spartanburg, South Carolina. We go to a doctor in Asheville, North Carolina. It's an hour, over an hour drive to get there and worth every mile of driving there because he gets it. He understands it. He's a functional doctor, functional medicine doctor, who's a medical doctor, who understands all of the intricacies of all these numbers and puts it in the right perspective. Kimberly says, uh, never am I going to live forever. My Nana used to tell me every day we're alive that we're one step closer to death. That's true. That's kind of morbid, but yeah, that's true. Berkeley says, if they only eat th uh, meat three times a week, they are eating a lot of carbs. Exactly, Berkeley. That's something. If you're only eating red meat three times a week or even just meat in general three times a week, that means three meals over the course of a week. And if you have 21 meals... In a week, three meals a day, seven days a week, three meals out of 21, which means 18 of them don't include meat at all. What are you eating? Such a great point, Berkeley. 
Uh, let's see. Ashton says, big food, big pharma, taking advantage of naive people. Can you say cha-ching? Again, I don't want to think it's only about the ka-ching, but uh, it's hard not to, right? Makes me wonder if the plant-based community is getting a cut of the proceeds. I don't know. And they've got a lot of money, that's for sure, from somewhere. Uh, Welcome Home Farm says, didn't doctors used to say that smoking was good for you? Can't argue with science. Yeah, the 1950s, there were actually billboards. And <clears throat> you could probably find these if you do a Google search of uh, cigarettes healthy. Um, and you'll find these billboards of, oh, yeah, I, I stay healthy because I smoke my Virginia Slims. And it's like a woman in a sexy outfit or whatever. I drink, I, I smoke my Virginia Slims and I'm healthier today. It's disgusting. Mary Post, I'm still scared of burger patties. There may be fillers in there that I don't like. So don't buy ones that are pre-made. Buy your own ground beef and make your own burger patties. Then you don't have to worry about that. That's a silly reason not to eat burger patties. Welcome Home says, thank you for all you do. It's wonderful that you will not be silenced by the haters or the plant-based robots. Oh, they can only hope to shut this mouth up right? Throne Room says, does the body take longer to break down and digest beef than any other food? Can it just be a mental thing craving certain foods? All right, so that's two different questions. So, uh, take longer to break down and digest beef. No longer than it would any other food. Yeah, I think sometimes the plant-based talking points get into the general discussion of these topics and there's no evidence that shows if your digestion is working well, you've got adequate stomach acid, you're doing all the right things in your health, that your body will have any problem eating mostly a, uh, beef. I'm currently still doing keto carnivore, and I had brisket last night, by the way. Oh, so good. Good. Um, that your body will break down and use those things. But your digestion does have to be working well, but that's not the meat's fault. That's fixing your body. So if it means you take digestive enzymes, if it means you do other things to help in that breakdown, your body will break down food, uh, regardless of the food, if your digestion is working well. The reason some people have issues is their digestion isn't working well and or they don't have enough stomach acid. Now, as far as the craving certain foods, can it be a mental thing? It absolutely could. But I do believe that the body sends you signals when you are deficient in certain nutrients, including protein, including fat, including micronutrients that would be found in certain foods. It makes you want to eat those things. It's why when you eat some food, uh, you sometimes get hungry pretty soon after. The reason you're hungry is you have some food in there that stoked a hormonal response and or you didn't need enough of a certain nutrient that your body still needs. Have you started looking at people not getting enough salt because they're eating low carb? Have you started looking at people not getting enough salts because they're eating low carb? So, well, we know when you eat a low carb ketogenic diet, you're gonna, you're gonna dump sodium because you're releasing the glycogen stores in your body. Well, what's in the glycogen stores? Water, sugar, and all the electrolytes. So that includes salt. So yeah, that's why we're all in this community Big fans of making sure you're getting ample salt put back in the body when you go keto. Mary Post of the vegans, I know all take tons of supplements. What's wrong with that picture? I'm not inherently against taking supplements but uh, that are targeted for your specific deficiencies. But I do think you're on to a bigger point. If you're eating nutrient-dense foods that have all the nutrition you need, you shouldn't have to over-supplement that much. <laughs> I haven't been to a doctor in over two years, says Jax. Well, it's, uh, I'm afraid to mention keto to any doctor. Yeah, that is a real and present danger. Pammy says, I spent my life eating what I thought was healthy, added all the veggies and fruit. I got bloated by the end of the day. Now I cut out many and feel better. I eat lots of meat. And you should. That's awesome. Bubba says, plant-based is harder and longer to break down. It's called fiber. Your body literally can't use it. Yeah, exactly. I find listening to keto podcast helped me make the decisions I need to make for my health. Thank you for what you do and the keto community for all you've done to keep us on this path. You're very welcome. So guys, the bottom line, this Jimmy rants plant-based. They are desperate. 
They're looking for any and every excuse they can to get you worried about eating meat. And they're going to try to use studies to do that, you guys. And you're going to see that red meat study <coughs> that I talked about here today out of Harvard. You're going to see it all plastered all over the health news today. Don't let it worry you. Hopefully by now you realize it's really, really bad science. That's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. As always, you can engage live in the content. You got to go follow me over on Instagram Live. I'm at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live just like all these people did here today. Thanks for being here. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, go to YouTube, type in keyword search Jimmy Rants. You'll find the show. Finally, the best of the best moments of this year's show in podcast form on the Jimmy Rants podcast on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. So until next time, we'll...